There's nothing you can say to make me accept the murder of thousands of children. Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix. I promise there is nothing you can say to me that will cause me to cease opposing the murder of thousands of children in Gaza. There is no name you can call me, no accusation you can scream at me, no talking point you can regurgitate at me that will ever make me shut up and accept this. The unexamined premise behind the frenetic push to reignite outrage over October 7th using rape allegations is that if Hamas fighters did sexually assault any Israeli women during the attack, then everyone has to shut up and let Israel keep murdering children by the thousands. This is self-evidently stupid. Western and Israeli propagandists are going to keep trying to find new reasons for you to reignite your outrage over October 7th, because October 7th is their side's only justification for a months-long mass atrocity that is far, far worse than anything that happened on October 7th. Tweet by Code Pink. Shameful. The House just passed a resolution wrongly conflating anti-Zionism with anti-Semitism. While countless Americans of all faiths march against Zionism and for peace in Palestine, Congress is more concerned about condemning them than ending the American-backed genocide. Comment by Caitlin. The U.S. House of Representatives just passed a resolution saying that Judaism is synonymous with a colonialist ideology which routinely murders children. I personally do not believe it's anti-Semitic to criticize Israel's murderous actions in Gaza. See, I have this wild idea that murdering children is not an aspect of the Jewish faith, and that saying otherwise actually has a very ugly history in our society. The only way to have more sympathy for the 1,200 Israelis killed on October 7th than the 16,000-plus Palestinians who've been killed in Gaza since is to believe Palestinians are subhumans whose lives are worth a tiny fraction of what Israeli lives are worth. That's the one and only way. A recent poll found that 57.5% of Israelis believe the IDF is using too little firepower in Gaza, while 36.6% said it's using just the right amount, with 4.2% saying it's unsure, and just 1.8% saying the IDF is using too much firepower. One reason Israeli officials keep saying shockingly genocidal and fascistic things is because the kind of talk you have to use to win the support of Israelis is completely different from the talk you have to use to win the support of Western liberals. Here's a headline from the Daily Beast. Jerusalem Post retracts article claiming that dead Palestinian baby was a doll. Israel is like, We're not killing children in Gaza. Those are dolls. Okay, maybe they're not dolls, but Hamas is lying about death tolls. Okay, maybe they're not lying about death tolls, but they're using human shields and they did 10-7. So every child we're killing was actually killed by Hamas. The Israel lobby is really just the Western Empire lobby. It's a specialized arm of the nonstop influence operation geared toward keeping member states of the empire moving in alignment with a globe-spanning power structure centralized around the United States, instead of acting like sovereign nations and taking care of their people in accordance with the will of the electorate. Governments like the U.S. and U.K. have legal tools in place that they can use to stop foreign governments from influencing their national politics, but they generally only use them when the influence would be coming from governments which aren't aligned with the Western Empire, like Russia, China, and Iran. If backing Israel militarily and diplomatically didn't serve the interests of the empire, those legal tools would long ago have been used to shut the lobbying down. But because lobbying activities actually benefit the interests of the empire by keeping U.S.-aligned war machinery targeted at all non-U.S.-aligned groups in the geostrategically crucial Middle East, they not only allow but actively encourage such lobbying. It's just one of the many types of adhesives necessary for keeping the disparate parts of an un unacknowledged empire always moving in the same directions. The Israel lobby lets groups like Israelis, Western Zionists, and American fundamentalist Christians fund the influence operations of the Western Empire out of their own personal coffers. 
Why would the empire managers stop that from happening? It's a great deal. <laughs>